RO wastes a tremendous amount of water. But let's say you are from, let's say, a place like Agra or Faridabad, where I know the quality of water is terrible. Even RO won't work. At that time, there was no, uh, the internet was not as cheap. So we literally made something called as frugal IoT. So our machine will send an SMS to us and that would have encoded message in it, which is like, what is the, could be. So IoT basically started for us like that. If AI is going the way these guys are predicting it to be, if we don't do something about this, yeah. we are going to be left behind. That's a fact. And because it, they will just progress so fast. This is something very similar to what happened with the semiconductor industry. Hello and welcome to the Startup Operator Podcast. I'm Roshan Karyapa. And today on the podcast, we have Avved Kumar, who's the co-founder and CEO of Boon, a very interesting water tech startup. We have a lot to talk to him about. So, hey Advet, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you so much for having me. It's a awesome. pleasure to be here. Talk about your product and R&D stuff, right? Because yeah. that is something that you guys, that's a unique thing for you. Uh, what are you doing, doing differently compared to maybe the others who are operating in the same commercial segment? And right. how do you double down on product and R&D investments? Like, I always find it like interesting in terms of like when you look at it from a business perspective, right? Mm -hmm. How do you decide to invest X or invest Y when you're yeah. not really all that sure, like, you know, you're going to get uh, any outcomes for it or if people are really going to pay for that additional thing? I still ask the same question to myself. So let me put it this way. I, I had too many people in R&D and too less people in sales because I love product. And then I realized, I saw my other... Uh, competitors and I saw, my God, these guys have everybody in sales. As a matter of fact, a certain ed tech company really inspired me. I was like, oh my God, how many sales people these guys have? It's crazy. Where's the product? Who's making it? So then I actually tweaked it. But to answer your question, you that is a fine balance that you have to discover. And that balance changes. In the start, you might have to actually put in a little bit more money towards development. And then you might have to start putting a little bit more money towards your, uh, your sales and marketing. So that's a fluid and very very difficult thing to uh, answer but you have to manage it let me put it this way you have to keep this in check because if your r&d is a little bit less you will not have in enough entry barrier or enough good quality product or if your sales is less then you will not be making money to pay for that r&d so you have to balance it you have to keep it in check i i would say you you just keep on reviewing it every quarter making sure that you're not uh, messing out on this how do you hire the folks for your product and R&D teams. I mean, it's hard enough, you know, hiring engineers to build a SaaS solution, but yeah. yours must be like an even more finite crowd, right? And in that, yeah. how do you kind of attract these folks to work for you? It's hard. I mean, let me see, as an entrepreneur, you have, you basically what, you find every kind of avenue. Okay, I've done everything. I've gone on Fiverr.com, I've gone on Freelancer.com, I've gone on Upwork.com. I found people from like that. I, I, I had people, uh, you know, bid on my project, then I uh, messaged them back. Hey, uh, you're, uh, uh, this looks good. Can you come in uh, for job interview? So I have had done things like that. I, have, I try to see other, when I see, uh, I will not name companies, the fan company you mentioned. So for example, see the who's who's joining the company. Oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> you, like to, you have to, you have to be a little bit, so you have to you have to find the scraps that you need, right? So I had a, a third party, actually a Bangalore-based uh, company doing engineering for us. I had some freelancers. I had some people on board. So you have to figure out the a mixture of it, especially especially when you don't have enough capital. I mean, if I had um, hundred million dollars, I would build a fantastic team. I know. As an entrepreneur fighting for scraps, you find the best way to optimize your capital and be fast. So if somebody wants a suggestion, my suggestion on this is don't hire. Hiring takes time. Hiring takes effort. Uh, in the starting for building a product or something like that, go for some something kind of a freelancer or some kind of agency because you have your milestones built in, you have your capital expenses built in. So it's more clear. In, in If you hire a bad hire can, can eat up four, five, six months. Uh, I've had R&D hires come in and after four or five months, when they have to deliver the product, they just quit and leave and start their own startup. This happens. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that even you have an, uh, in the starting, it is, I, I feel it is cost efficient to maybe find freelancers so that they have a defined milestones. 
and i feel like that's what most product startups do anyway right now yeah at least for at least to build your first version of the startup yeah. right i mean so on the product front how are you kind of integrating ai and so on i mean it seems to be the buzzword anyway right yeah yeah with generative ai and stuff yeah. and you mentioned there are different gradations of water not yeah. every water is the same like mm-hmm. whether it's bangalore or bombay etc yeah. so how have you built in these technologies to sort of understand all of these finer nuances and process it accordingly yeah so i think uh, it's a very important question because i first of all i let me answer the buzzword thing because i've meet startup founders who tell me oh we are doing blockchain I'm like how are you doing blockchain like no no we are making these cameras on blockchain so you know all sides of things i, I didn't they don't make sense so uh, it's very important not to get stuck in it i know it it can help you in your little bit of fundraise and all of that but it's very important to know because so for us let me start up tell me about my story so we started putting these water purifiers all across india in rural areas but we if if let's say there is a complaint i have to now send somebody there who will have to see what is wrong with it then maybe search the search the local market or come back get the component go back and repair it and when you're serving a community trust me when i tell you we started we start getting calls and may uh, calls and messages and twitter threads ki yahan pani nahi chal raha hai you know like that and then the local mla will call us because we were in villages right they were like part of government funding so we at that time there was no uh the internet was not as cheap so we literally made something called as frugal iot so our machine will send an sms to us and that would have encoded message in it which is like what is the could we so iot basically started for us like that because it served a purpose of being able to identify what is wrong and what is going on with the machine and then ai component actually came very naturally because what is happening is in india <laughs> india has so many complexities i just the quality of water not only changes from location it changes with season so for example in gurgaon in in rainy seasons you will have a lot of mud coming into your water so now we were like okay so we know that these are the certain variations that happen so if something is going wrong during this time can we can we pinpoint the reason for it for example if the water flow is low in during this season can i say oh it's probably because my media filter or whatever has gotten choked because of the mud coming in so i just need to get this one changed it doesn't it's not my main ro that is is bad so it's quite it came quite organically uh, for us to build that kind of ai so it was more so so the iot platform is used to monitor these machines and ai to basically try to uh, predict what is their failure and the 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 reason why it works for us is because this allows us to uh, lower the maintenance cost and that is one of our key factors in all our machines because we are able to really when you are in a going to a hotel or, or a hospital you can't tell guests one day today no water right i i actually sold a machine to a, a hotel in bhutan recently and they said you know for biggest problem for us is that if we have to get filters they have to be like it will take like a week to come up because they are in the middle of nowhere so with this technology they are able to maintain that so it solves a purpose so if it doesn't solve a purpose you ai and all of that ultimately is not cheap running those uh, scripts are not cheap so you can't just do it and even if you, if you don't have the direction it doesn't make much sense that is how we integrated so it was quite organically what was growing and it was only later on we found out okay this is not scada this is iot Oh, okay. Now uh, Geo has come in. Uh, net is so cheap. Let's put in all our machines. Let's get all these parameters. But we were initially doing it just because of uh, out of necessity. Mm-hmm. So it is important to evaluate what kind of technologies are there and how can they help in saving your costs or making your product better. You have to really think about it. I mean, to say I can even say that I have uh, blockchain. My machines uh, are very good, and I, you know. Uh, the the water quality is saved on the blockchain so nobody can mess with it but anyway that what i'm trying to say is that like you need a real like a use case uh, it, it organically grew into something that we actually later found out okay uh, this is ai what we are doing uh, and of course now the beauty is that these platforms you know aws azure Go- uh, google cloud platform they have made all of this so simple so easy i think it would be almost criminal not to think about these things take advantage of it yeah because they the platform they made is so easy now i mean 
easier sorry let me put this way so i think it's one should uh, definitely think about it it can make your life simple in so many things for example in my crm which i mentioned i made we have just made a simple thing that uh, what is the most likely thing that you might be entering mm -hmm. so it just makes it very easy for my guys to be filling up forms that's it very simple but it it works right so these kind of things i think are are something uh, going in and you know with coming in of chat gpt and all of these things don't get too involved think about how chat gpt is working what is this this procedural text that is happening what is it how can it how can we use it and so i think it's it's important uh, to keep in mind slight tangent on whatever you mentioned right recently sam altman was in india and he said a few things about uh, you know building fundamental ai more particularly on large language models and so on right yeah, yeah. and there was an entire controversy around that what do you think it will take for us to build some of these fundamental technologies you know yeah. we certainly seem to have the talent even if you look at r&d institutes uh, in the us or whatever they're staffed by a large number of indians absolutely yeah, um, yeah. So what will it take for us to build some of this stuff so i think there this is a two part question first of all let me just uh, tell you one thing that if ai is going the way these guys are predicting it to be if we don't do something about this yeah. we are going to be left behind that's a fact and because it they will just progress so fast this is something very similar to what happened with the semiconductor industry right you know india had a, some kind of a semiconductor industry we had a, i think was it in chandigarh or something that got fire and all i think hindustan semi i'm forgetting the name of it so in the infant in that stage india also want to do it but we missed the boat and now Taiwan and of course from your ASML and these guys are so far ahead our semiconductor industry to catch is just a massive dream or any other country and so ai is something like that so it needs first of all it, to answer we need to think about it i think everybody has said it all you know big entrepreneurs this is everybody can see it second what would it take that is a little bit more complex question so first of all all these indians who are working in these companies they they are working there it's not just because of salaries i'm telling you as a person who was working there it's not just salary it's just the entire ecosystem you know yeah. all of these things and that ecosystem no no entrepreneur like me you or me you can change that requires a push from uh, the governments you you know to make a lot of these things simpler you know we need to be able to attract talent not just uh, not just to retain our own talent but let's say there is some really young bright boy in i don't know in middle east or europe or even in us he should be able to feel like oh let me go move to bangalore and let me work with this company we as if i want to start a business uh, startup i should be able to attract the best talent us can do that i can't yeah. only way i can do it is by giving them an insane salary that's probably the only way to do it and that's what happens you know you have the people who move to india are at a very great salary so that is a very difficult question to ask but uh, but i do feel that with what we have we can definitely do with with the people we have it's not as if we are less it's just i don't know maybe maybe we need our own sam altman <laughs> investing in these companies maybe we need more funding i don't know right it's a good question or maybe we need better leaders they they have both they have everything they have good people they have good funding see the amount of checks he's writing to um, this open air right that come out uh, some insane billion dollar something i don't know i don't i'm forgetting it but have you heard any company get a money like that in india yeah which is which is unique not a, a not a copycat of something this for india you know x for india not like that like something unique doesn't happen investors ask tell me that hey is, is this company what you're doing is there is there anywhere else equivalent equivalent because if there is and they have raised funding if they feel that it is safer to invest in india also but if you want to do something totally unique i i think it's still difficult to do it here yeah no it is uh, it is definitely a challenge and i think in the interim period i think the government has to step in right and probably create a more conducive environment in terms of investments and so on you know in this in this conversation and and you know even before we started recording also right i mean i, I feel like there's a lot of scrappiness in you like i mean you 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 know not like the typical you know raise a bunch of capital and yeah. you know splurge sort of startups yeah. that uh, you know people are generally used to uh, from the media stories and everything is that like a dna is that something that you've sought to build into the company and if you could just explain the thought process behind that so i know it's very uh, easy to get you know read these stories about unicorn and all of that i highly recommend 
to think about yourself as a cockroach a cockroach startup see i have no problem if tomorrow i say i don't want to do work i my company is profitable i may not grow but i am it's profitable we are working fine and we will continue to survive right the problem is that when you have to grow the scale part is very difficult because you have to burn to get a future revenue and so i don't operate that way i have a very clear goal i have two goals one goal is to make an impact impact as in you i want better uh, companies better thought process in this ecosystem of mine and second is i want to impact as many people as i can so in that thing i i i what i try to do is that i like to think myself that if i don't get funding ever can i survive and if the answer is yes i'm okay so if i get funding it's fine it's great but this gives me a lot of leverage because this allows me to say no to certain funds or capitals which i think may have these stipulations or things and this is something that i think more entrepreneurs are now realizing you know they may get very excited with the funding coming in and sign away the ssa sha documents and not realize that if something goes down you have a down valuation you might not get anything if your investors might walk away with something maybe some less money but you will walk away with nothing so it's important for you to also safeguard your own time your own efforts and so if when a investor comes in you can also have the leverage to say okay uh, this is okay this is not okay i can i am willing to walk away from it but if you are burning money you can't walk away you know it and they know it and so you are in a very bad situation at that time right it's always great to have that optionality right i mean whether you want to take external capital or not and also i mean just be able to dictate terms in terms of how you want to grow right uh, and i think that's a very useful lesson for startups especially considering whatever has happened since the market has turned